Okay, uh, I think uh, I think everybody can hear me. Uh, so now, uh, the dear colleagues, it's very nice to have you on our webinar today. My name is Stanislav Lisman. So, and uh, the topic of uh, our talk today will be basic principles of advanced EFM modes and applications. Uh, atomic force microscopy is a powerful tool for the research in the field of nanotechnology. Mostly it is used for the morphological analysis of nanoobjects, meaning that most of common activity in AFM research is still topography. In this situation, the capabilities such as electromagnetic and mechanical modes being available in many setups by default are unfortunately neglected. Today's webinar is dedicated to reviewing the basic principles of advanced AFM modes and applications. Let's just run uh, through today's topics. At the beginning, we'll uh, revive the AFM operation principles and the main modes of topography. Contact, sorry. <laughs> okay, Windows is smarter than, than me. <laughs> Uh, so, so uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, we'll revive uh, the AFM operation principles, uh, the main modes of topography, contact and non-contact. The next session, I'll talk about different kinds of electromagnetic modes. Uh, uh, then I'll carry uh, on with uh, mechanical applications, and at the end, I'll be happy to answer your questions within uh, any time we have left. So. Uh, first of all, starting with main principles, let's review the AFM operation scheme. On this slide, you can see the schematics of AFM operation. We have a sample placed on, a, uh, on the high-precision XYZ scanner, brought, together, uh, brought to contact with the probe by stepper motor engagement mechanism. The laser, focused on the flexible cantilever beam, uh, is reflected to the sectioned photodiode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For this number seven, okay. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, so, so the deflection signal uh, measured by by this uh, section for uh, for photodiode is proportional to the cantilever bending, which is by turn uh, proportional to the tip central interaction force. All AFM modes uh, be, uh, are based on the principle of measuring and controlling this uh, force interaction. That's why it's called uh, atomic force microscopy. Uh, on the previous slide, a uh, sample was attached to the piezo scanner, so the scheme uh, was called a sample scanning configuration. On this slide, you can see another configuration where a sample is uh, static and tip is attached to the scanner. This tip scanning scheme is a bit more complicated, uh, as, it's, as it's seen uh, from the image, uh, but uh, for allows to overcome such limitations as sample size and mass. Most of graphical explanations in this webinar will refer to the tip scanning scheme. Next, let's move to the main techniques which allow to measure the morphological properties uh, of the sample with high spatial resolution contact and non-contact modes. According to the Hooke's law, force interaction between tip and sample is proportional to tip bending and the cantilever stiffness. Stiffness uh, for the contact mode cantilevers can vary from a really small 0 0.1 to several uh, newtons per meter. In contact mode feedback system keeps deflection uh, of the tip constant, so scanning the surface and detecting the z-coordinate of the piezo at each point means that we can get the topography with a high spatial resolution. On this slide, you can see the variety of modes based on contact mode. In every case, the principle is the same. The feedback system keeps constant force interaction between tip and sample. And uh, the other properties, such as electrical or mechanical, are measured uh, simultaneously. Later on, I will cover some of these modes in more detail. One of the main disadvantages of the contact mode is a huge lateral force appearing between tip and sample. This puts certain limitations on the sample properties. For example, in case of soft samples, the tip can simply cut it. 
Alternative mode uh, for sample topography observation is so-called non-contact or how it is called semi-contact, tapping or amplitude modulation mode. Uh, this is the same uh, name, uh, the, the name uh, for, for the different names for the same mode. In this case, stiffer cantilever with a force constant uh, from uh, 0.5 till a uh, few hundreds of newtons per meter and frequencies from 50 to 2000 kilohertz are used. In non-contact mode, the cantilever is excited with the piezo shaker, uh, normally on the resonance frequency. When the tip uh, comes closer to the surface, the amplitude is damped. The value of suppressed amplitude here corresponds to some value of the force interaction between tip and sample. The equation, how we can see here, uh, which, uh, which uh, describes uh, uh, this, uh, this force, uh, is, is not so clear as in contact mode. But the idea is the same. Again, again the, the same. Feedback system keeps this interaction force constant varying the coordinate of Z piezo. Recording this coordinate in all XY positions, we can measure the topography of the sample. Phase imaging is one of the most common tapping mode based techniques. In phase imaging, together with topography, we measure the phase lag between the excitation and response. This phase lag, which appears in this mode, is related to the local energy dissipation. So if the material properties vary over the sample surface, phase contrast will show this variation. On uh, the, this uh, slide, you can see a nice looking example of uh, the layer of water on mica surface. The tip uh, dissipates much more energy on the so-called wet wet areas, which is clearly seen in the phase map. High resolution imaging of atomic scale structures with AFM is one of the best features uh, that attracts researchers to see the uh, to, to these techniques. In this slide, you can observe images of topography and phase of the periodical patterns, which are with a few nanometer resolution, we, uh, such as uh, those common to laminar uh, structures of normal and uh, fluor fluorinated alkanes on HOPG. You can uh, you can see that the images of uh, normal alkanes uh, uh, have the the structure period according down to 2.3 nanometers. Together with high, res high requirements for the system like low thermal drift and high stability, one of the key factors of getting such high quality results is the right choice of the AFM probe. This slide describes so-called convolution effect when the tip size is bigger than investigated objects. So after the scanning uh, an object uh, which is, for example, one nanometer wide, like you see uh, shown on the image, with the probe which, which has tip curvature of 10 nanometers, we are getting the convolve, uh, convoluted image of the object which is about 11 nanometers wide, which is not really the true. On this slide, you see the high resolution image of uh, triplex DNA. It became possible to resolve the periodic structure of the object uh, with period equal to 3.4 nanometers with the use of specially chosen DLC tip with an extremely sharp uh, whisker attack. The cantilever choice. Above, I've mentioned several parameters of AFM probes like stiffness, resonance frequency, and the tip sharpness. The right choice of the AFM probe is a very important matter in getting best results with the AFM research. On this scheme, you can see the very basic algorithm for probe choice. It is why I will not spend a lot of time on the detail here. It is better for me to mention the corresponding probe types after each application as I go through the presentation. Electromagnetic, electromagnetic properties uh, in AFM. Let me move to another big section of today's uh, discussions, uh, which is uh, dedicated to the research of electromagnetic properties of materials with the use of AFM. Uh, the first mode uh, I'd like to mention uh, is so-called spreading uh, resistant uh, uh, imaging or conductivity mapping. Spreading resistance imaging is the mode based on the uh, based on the contact mode uh, where a probe co coated with the conductive material is moved across the surface keeping uh, constant force. At the same time the voltage 
is applied uh, between a probe and the sample. So when the tip meets the conductive area, current runs through the circuit. Uh, thus, the map of conductivity can be measured together, together with topography. On this slide, you can see the topography and the conductivity map of uh, uh, fuller, fullerites embedded in polymer matrix. Value of the current measured, uh, measured depends on the value of the polarity of voltage applied between probe and the sample. Here you see the example of conductivity maps measured with the different voltages applied. At negative values, we see that conductive uh, fullerites show the negative contrast which starts to change when the bias voltage value goes through zero. The next slide shows an example of high sensitivity of current map obtained with a on modified OTS sample. A flower-like structure which is not seen on the topography is clearly resolved on the current image. <coughs> to avoid the sample oxidation, voltage less than the one volt was applied. The current map shows the good contrast of two pica amps, which is seen uh, to be far from the noise level. So the probes for uh, spreading resistance imaging uh, should normally have a relatively small spring contents, uh, constants, not to affect the sample. The spring constants should be uh, from uh, 0 0.05 till 1 newton per meter, so-called contact probes, and good, good conductive coating like a platinum, a titanium nitrite, or gold. It should be noted that uh, any coating, uh, not only in this case, but uh, in, a, in any case of coated probe, uh, increases the tip radius and decreases the spatial resolution. So let's move to another uh, technique, the Kelvin probe uh, microscopy. To investigate uh, the electrostatic forces over the sample surface, uh, the alternating voltage is applied between the tip and the sample con uh, consisting of a DC bias voltage, <coughs> VDC, uh, shown, in the, shown here, and the AC voltage, uh, which, uh, which is a harmonic, uh, uh, harmonically changed uh, voltage between tip and the sample. The electrostatic force, uh, force in a capacitor uh, may be found by differentiating the energy function which respect to the separation of the elements can, uh, and, uh, uh, can be written as a second uh, equation uh, shown, uh, shown here. Uh, where C is the capacitance, Z is the separation and V is the voltage uh, <coughs> between tip and sample. Substituting the previous formula for voltage uh, V shows uh, that the electrostatic force can be split up to three con contributions and the total electrostatic force F acting on the tip uh, then has spectral components at the frequencies at uh, omega and 2 omega. The DC co component FDC here uh, contribu contributes to top topographical signal then a term F omega at the characteristic frequency omega is used to measure the contact potential <coughs> and the contribution of two F2 omega can be used to for capacitance microscopy. Since the electrostatic force at the omega depends on a VDC uh, minus VDCP, the value of VDC can be mini minimized. The omega term corresponds to the potential between tip and the sample. To separate short distance Van der Waals forces and long distance electrostatic forces, two pass method can be used. The, two, uh, the idea of two pass method uh, is the following. In the first pass, we are measuring the topography of the sample and remembering it. Then in the second pass, we lift the probe <coughs> and, uh, and uh, repeat this topography measuring, measuring some other characteristics. In the Kelvin probe microscopy, we uh, we minimize uh, uh, the, the, the DC feedback uh, minimizes the amplitude of uh, uh, probe oscillation. Uh, so the, in this case, this feedback output will be equivalent to the potential difference between tip and the sample. So uh, on this slide, you can see the image of carbon nanotubes <coughs> deposed on a uh, silicon, and those nanotubes are of different diameter. 
that uh, topography doesn't show obvious difference between them. At the same time, surface potential shows that nanotubes of uh, uh, of uh, bigger di diameters give uh, s smaller uh, s smaller uh, show the show the smaller wo work function. So uh, and we can clearly see that uh, that uh, this sample con uh, contains on three types of nanotubes diameters. In this example of Kelvin probe force microscopy. Uh, yeah, which could uh, you can see the visualization of the charge induced on the oxide layer of the gallium arsenide with the usage of low raster uh, voltage lithography. Another way to separate the, topo the topography and the electrostatic forces is to use the excitation frequency different from the resonance frequency of the cantilever, which is used for topo topography tracking. Thus, KPFM can be done in the single pass without tracking each line two times. This solution requires the simultaneous usage of two feedback CU servers, like shown here, the Z server and KPFM server, and at least two locking amplifiers uh, to, to, to detect the main resonance frequency of the cantilever and the uh, frequency of uh, the electrical excitation. <coughs> Moreover, usage of the additional locking amplifiers, like shown on the schematics, uh, allow uh, the simultaneous measurement of surface potential, uh, so of uh, surface potential, DC by DZ and DC by DV components of the electrical response. Uh, switching locking amplifiers in series or in parallel allow to run uh, amplitude and phase modulated Kelvin probe microscopy techniques. On this slide, you can see the example of the topography surface, uh, uh, surface potential and in uh, amplitude modulation and phase modulation. DC by DZ and DC by DV uh, maps uh, uh, com com components uh, measured simultaneously on the floral cane assembly deposed on silicon. The benefit of single pass uh, K KPFM <coughs> comes from the fact that the tip, in this case, is staying at the optimal distance above the sample. This results in higher spatial resolution, uh, spatial and electrical resolution. On this slide, you can see that uh, the comparison of KPFM images of floral cane chains of mica. Surface potential map show, uh, shows a higher, uh, sharper image in case of a single pass. According to our experience, uh, of KPFM study, the best result <coughs> with the usage of standard probes were achieved with uh, FMG L1 uh, cantilevers uh, with a resonance frequency about 60 kilohertz coated with platinum. Uh, another interesting technique in AFM research is piezo response force microscopy. The basic idea of PFM is uh, to affect locally the piezoelectric sample surface by the electric field and to analyze the resulting displacement of the sample surface, like sh shown on this movie. This uh, PFM technique is based on the converse piezoelectric effect, uh, which is the linear coupling between the electrical and mechanical properties of the material. Since the ferroelectric, uh, ferroelectric exhibits uh, piezoelectricity, an electric field applied to a ferroelectric sample results in change of these dimensions. To detect the polarization orientated uh, 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 the polarization orientation, the AFM tip is used as a top electrode, <coughs> which is moved over the sample surface in contact mode, det uh, detecting amplitude and phase of the AC response in plane and out of plane. At the right side, here you can see the example of PFM uh, studies uh, of a TGS sample. The atomic step observed on the topography doesn't correlate with vertical amplitude and phase response. As I said, AFM uh, is capable to detect domain oscillation in both in-plane and out-of-plane directions. To do this, uh, this is, it's simultaneously schematics with the uh, two locking amplifiers <coughs> should be used, like shown on this uh, structure, on this scheme. So here is the example of such application. 
On this slide, you can observe the example of uh, DPAP, uh, uh, a high temperature for electric, where the domains uh, are non-orthogonal, uh, which results in a contrast in amplitude and phase in both in-plane and out-of-plane scans. Both uh, PFM uh, images and topography were measured simultaneously within the single cycle using uh, the two separate uh, uh, locking amplifiers. Uh, regarding the probes in PFM, probes for PFM should be normally, uh, like according to our experience, should be normally uh, should normally have high spring constant from <coughs> one till 100 newtons per meter, so-called non-contact probes, to avoid to avoid the crosstalk with the topography, and of course the good conductive coatings like platinum or, or uh, titanium nitride. Magnetic force microscopy or MFM. Uh, MFM, uh, like, uh, the, like the uh, Kelvin probe microscopy, uh, the double pass is, is a double pass technique where the magnetized probe is used. So we have the uh, spe specimen with uh, uh, magnetic domains oriented in a different, uh, 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 which have different orientation. So in the first pass, uh, tip uh, goes over the surface measuring the topography. The system, uh, the AFM remembers this uh, uh, trace, then tip lifts <coughs> over the surface and repeats the topography uh, for flying over the surface. In the, this case, uh, the phase uh, contrast, uh, phase shift uh, is measured, and the phase shift uh, corresponds to the, uh, to the magnetic force uh, gra gradient. So the, thus, uh, using the two-pass technique, uh, we uh, we say separate the uh, influence uh, of the topography. On the right side, you can see typical MFM images of yttrium uh, ion garnet films. One of the great advantages of AFM is the possibility of running experience in different environments. On this slide, you can see the charge, uh, the change of the structure of the magnetic domains. Uh, when the sample temperature passes the Curie point. It is seen uh, the, how the mains of cobalt monocrystal collapse uh, with the temperature going up. Another example of uh, a cobalt uh, uh, gold sandwich domain structure transformed under a variation of the external magnetic field. Controlled magnetic field uh, variation is possible in plane, like uh, shown on the top, uh, and uh, in a like in plane, like show shown in the bottom, and out of plane shown on, on the top. So, uh, uh, regarding the uh, MFM probes, uh, the, there are two types uh, of uh, uh, MFM probes uh, uh, available. Uh, uh, MFM LM probes uh, are probes uh, which are coated with a uh, uh, with a coating uh, with a low magnetic moment, which can be used for me measurement of uh, a very high, uh, of high sensitivity, uh, where, where the magnetic moment is uh, very small. And uh, MFM HC probes with a higher uh, coercitivity, uh, high, high coercitive uh, coating, we should we should be used uh, in a, in case of uh, uh, high coercitivity of the sample or uh, used in a, in a external magnetic field. Next application is nanolithography. Uh, so uh, together with uh, various types of imaging. AFM provides the unique possibility to carry out the sample modification at the same nanoscale using the AFM probe. And Team DT hardware and software makes uh, uh, possible 24 different types of nanolithography. So here you can see the, the, uh, the uh, it's three modes, uh, two methods, uh, four regimes, <coughs> and in total it's uh, 24 types which uh, uh, come out after combinations. Uh, so here and here, here you see the uh, program interface uh, of uh, nanolithographical um, uh, module, uh, which uh, which allows uh, to, to do all these types of lithographies. The first mode of lithography, uh, 
is so-called force lithography. When the tip scratches the soft specimen, applying high force, as, as shown on the left image. Another mode, um, uh, which is more accurate uh, type of force lithography, is so-called uh, dynamic plowing mode. It is shown on the right image. In this case, in the case of uh, dynamic plowing, uh, the amplitude of oscillating probe is damped and tip blows the surface uh, of the sample. Another way to modify the sample surface is the voltage lithography. When the action of, uh, is performed applying voltage or current between tip and sample. Having a absorption layer of water in usual environmental condition, this action results in electrochemical reaction. Thus the local excitation takes place. Current lithography works according to the same principle, except the fact that instead of applying some uh, certain voltage, uh, the current is controlled by the independent feedback loop, adjusting the amplitude of the electrical pulse automatically. On this slide, you can see the examples of uh, patterns uh, of uh, uh, local anodic oxi oxidation on different substrates. It can be seen that uh, this technique allows to build really small uh, structures. When uh, running uh, uh, nanolithography, <laughs> the precision, uh, precision of probe positioning is very important. Most of NTMDT scanners are equi equipped with low noise capacitive closed loop sensors, which provide the high precision and uh, repeatability and eliminate the piezochromics artifacts such as creep, hysteresis, and nonlinearity. On the top figures, you can see uh, uh, the uh, nanolithography made in open loop uh, mode and in closed loop mode. And uh, uh, other, uh, other lithography patterns were also uh, created in uh, closed loop mode. So uh, they show uh, absolute regularity of uh, created structures. These are some uh, examples of nano art which don't <laughs> really have any practical value, but uh, shows uh, the capabilities of nano lithography. You can uh, you can mention the uh, the small scale of those uh, objects. Together with surface modification, EFM allows to manipulate the objects deposed on the substrate. On this slide, you can see the carbon nanotube moved by this uh, by the probe along the direction of shown by arrows. On the right side, you see the result of such impact. Probes for nanotechnology, uh, for nanolithography. So high stress of the tip apex during the nanolithography and manipulations claim that the tip coating should be durable and uh, conductive, especially in the case of electrical lithography. Probes of DCP series have stable and uh, non-destructive coating and fit well for, uh, for nanolithographical applications. Other types of uh, conductive coatings and as uh, uh, tungsten uh, carbide, titanium oxide, titanium nitride, and platinum were also reported to be successfully used in nanolithal applications. Together with the achievement uh, of in-play information about the sample uh, surface, uh, uh, surface uh, EFM provides the opportunity of studying various kinds of spectra. One of the powerful tools in AFM uh, is atomic force spectroscopy. So, like we mentioned previously, the deflection signal corresponds to the force interaction between the tip and the sample. Varying the distance between tip and sample, the detection uh, and detecting the force, so-called force, uh, so-called force curves can be recorded, as shown on the image. Uh, the shape of the force curve give uh, the additional information about sample properties, like mechanical, uh, like uh, shown on the uh, left side, and uh, uh, and ad ad adhesive. So uh, the very good idea is to bring these values to some numerical, uh, to some numbers, quantitative numbers. So, uh, fitting the force curve with the different analytical modes like Hertz, DMT, j uh makes possible the quantitative anal analysis of samples' mechanical properties. In other words, the analysis of the force curve's data can give the distribution of the elastic modulus of the sample with high spatial resolution. On this slide, you see you on from the top, you can see the response. Uh, 
the uh, common response from uh, rubber elastic materials like PDMS. And uh, from the bottom, the, uh, the adhesive uh, materials like polystyrene and polybutadiene. Uh, in the first case, a uh, simple Hertz model can be easily applied. But in the, in the bottom, where we see the big adhesive wells, as you see here, models uh, which you take into account the adhesion, like JK or DMT, should be used. Another example of force spectroscopy uh, is uh, the. Uh, this is another example of force spectroscopy on uh, living cells. Due to, to the very small Young's modulus, a sharp probe can easily cut this object. So, in case of uh, investigation of soft biological sample, uh, samples, uh, especially in the scanning force spectroscopy, the probes with spherical colloidal tips are often used. Another good advantage of the colloidal tip is that. Uh, uh, the, it, it, the, its shape is uh, well known, the uh, tip curvature is well known, and uh, uh, it's uh, pretty durable and uh, doesn't uh, deform with the time. Scanning force spectroscopy gives uh, the advantage of switching uh, on the third dimension of the in AFM research, like uh, ha having uh, the variation of uh, uh, distance parameter. But the biggest disadvantage of this mode is very small speed. <clears throat> For example, to collect force curve volume of uh, 256 by 256 points, one should wait for more than 10 hours. Uh, one of uh, our recent developments is hybrid mode, which is the dramatically extends the capabilities of force analysis. Uh, analysis. In hybrid mode, the tip sample distance is modulated according to the quasi-harmonic law, like shown on, uh, on the left uh, upper picture. Thus, the tip enters a force interaction with the sample thousands times per second, meaning uh, that thousands uh, of the force curves are being measured each second. Uh, for force, the, the distance curves, uh, 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 online analysis enables uh, 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 the maps of uh, topographical, mechanical, and electrical properties of the sample to be extracted with high, high, high spatial resolution. Commonly, Hybrid mode gives topography, adhesion, and uh, elasticity mapping pictures. On this slide, you can see the image of the uh, polystyrene spheres, uh, uh, which uh, the polystyrene has about three gigapascals uh, young models, embedded in soft uh, poly polyethylene matrix, which has uh, about uh, 200 megapascals. The crystalline structure of this uh, uh, is clearly seen on the polyethylene uh, adhesion map. Blue Tops on the polystyrene spheres uh, or islands are the, the, the drops of uh, polyethylene and uh, are clearly distinguished in adhesion and stiffness maps as well. So in this example, hybrid mode gives us the compositional mapping of samples properties within a single scan session. And comparing to <coughs> simple topography measurements or uh, phase imaging, here we can clearly understand uh, where, uh, where is uh, one material and where is another. Together with the uh, mechanical uh, properties, hybrid uh, gives information about uh, electrical properties. Compositional uh, image, uh, imaging of single wall nanotubes is shown on this uh, uh, image. Uh, the, uh, those are topography, current, and stiffness. The thing is that uh, uh, this is a very difficult sample for spreading resistance imaging because in spreading resistance mode, the tip is in contact uh, with the surface and uh, would uh, easily uh, move, the, uh, move the nanotubes. But uh, with hybrid, we get rid of lateral forces, thus image is being obtained much easier. Current image of my middle horizontal tube here uh, shows the fine structure. Looking at the stiffness map, uh, we see that the same object is softer. So the, the, with high probability, we can say that here we see the bunch of nanotubes, but uh, not the single wall nanotube. Living cell study has always been important and challenging. Fixing cell is a uh, well means uh, killing it. But without fixation, cell is poorly attached to the surface, and uh, which makes the living cell imaging uh, uh, pretty difficult with the usage of standard AFM te techniques. Hybrid mode eliminates lateral forces and uh, dramatically uh, simplifies separation in liquid, which makes investigation of living cell a routine technique. 
the option of uh, saving the whole array of force curve uh, for each uh, scanning point gives uh, the possibility to run the post-processing. Here you can see <coughs> the program interface of uh, working uh, for with uh, post-processing of uh, hybrid uh, mode volumes which are not really uh, limited uh, with 256 points uh, or, some other, uh, or some other number. The uh, issue, uh, the, uh, so, so a researcher can choose uh, different modes and uh, tune par parameters to fit the experimental data in the most excellent ways. The issue of the tip choice for quantitative mechanics and many other innovations are planned for the discussion in our uh, webinar coming up in uh, September. So we'll discuss uh, those uh, issues in detail. In the end of every paragraph of my presentation, as you mentioned, I have uh, mentioned the uh, AFM probe types which are suitable for this or that application. It was, far, it was shown that to investigate various properties of different uh, of samples, different the probe types should be used. Our latest development, the uh, revolution cartridge, makes the breakthrough in this direction. The revolution cartridge, shown, uh, shown on this slide, contains 38 probes of different stiffness and different coatings uh, on the single chip. So from, from the right side or the left side you can see uh, the, uh, the uh, view of a revolution head and uh, uh, from the right side uh, the schematics uh, of uh, one of such chips uh, where you see uh, different uh, sectors uh, with probes or with, uh, which have uh, the different uh, properties. Uh, either uh, stiffness, uh, resonance frequencies, or the coatings. Easy handling and full automation uh, of all setup uh, routines allows the researcher to extend the AFM tools with various point of view. You can find more detailed information about the new cartridge technology on our web page, which is shown here uh, on the bottom. So, uh, uh, frankly speaking, each of mentioned topics deserve a separate talk, but unfortunately uh, our time is uh, limited with uh, 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 something about an hour, uh, so thank you for your attention, So, uh, and um, we've got some questions, I think, uh, so some questions, I think, and uh, uh, I think I'll have some time to answer them, so Alana? Hi Stas, yeah we do have a couple of questions, yep yeah, we do have a couple of questions, um, there's one question from uh, Jian and Huang, I hope I've uh, an, uh, pronounced the name correctly, can the AFM do the scanning capacitance microscopy? Yes, uh, I, I didn't uh, mention this uh, topic uh, uh, topic here. Well, actually, I, I did I did mention it uh, when I was talking about detecting uh, different uh, modes of uh, uh, the, the different different frequencies of uh, uh, electrostatic response uh, together with a Kelvin probe microscopy. Uh, also, uh, there is possibility to run the so-called contact capacitance mode uh, with a, this uh, special head in, in our setup. So yes, the answer is yes. Great, that's brilliant. Thank you, Stas. Uh, the next question is from uh, Leila Balobiad, um, and that is around the choice of the tip. She says that uh, we know that the radius of the tip can be selected with previous knowledge about the feature sizes. The question is how to choose the right spring constant, and what's the advantage of using scanning tip over scanning sample? So let's uh, let me start from the end. Uh, the uh, uh, the advance of using uh, the scanning by tip, to, uh, comparing to scanning by the sample, is that uh, in scanning by tip we are not limited with the sample uh, uh, size or say, sample uh, mass, because we cannot put very heavy sample on the bottom scanner. Uh, but but the uh, scanning by by the tip is uh, has more complicated uh, uh, tracking system. So, uh, so, 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 in case of the somewhat small sample, I would uh, suggest to use uh, scanning by sample. Uh, the uh, previous question was uh, uh, about the spring constants uh, uh, 
uh, which should be chosen for uh, this or that application. So in in my uh, in my presentation, I tried to uh, to point uh, to point out the, uh, the types of uh, stiffnesses uh, used for this or that application. But uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, to to choose the exact right tip. Uh, exactly for uh, for the uh, for current experiment. Sometimes it it, it takes takes time and uh, uh, takes some trials. And uh, the, as for the tip shape, uh, we uh, uh, there are some uh, known methods of uh, uh, of uh, uh, the, the of finding of uh, looking at the tip, uh, finding out the, what is the, the tip shape. Uh, using a specially uh, prepared uh, uh, EFM samples, like for example TGT sample, uh, uh, which uh, which is produced by by us or some other tip checkers. Uh, the bad thing with those samples is that uh, most of them uh, uh, are like the tip killers. <laughs> so in case uh, except TGT. So in case of uh, you run the a tip check, your t t tip shape is modified. So the the right and good way of uh, looking for the tip shape uh, is the usage of the electron uh, microscope. No, the 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 best way. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah and I, I would uh, I would like to mention that uh, uh, so soon my my colleagues t tell me that uh, soon we'll have the webinar regarding the cantilever choice. Uh, where we'll uh, talk about cantilevers in more detail. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, uh, Staz. I've got, um, there's another question here. Um, there's quite a lot, actually. Um, what type of control method do you use for piezo response force microscopy? And that's coming from Ning Chuang. Uh, we in the imaging, uh, we use uh, the, the DC and AC uh, excitation. Uh, we we can apply this to uh, either to the sample or either to the tip. Uh, so, uh, and for uh, the uh, the piezo force uh, spectroscopy, which I didn't mention uh, in this uh, presentation, uh, we we use uh, both uh, uh, like a, a step. Uh, wise and uh, pulse wise uh, control. I hope I understood the question right in the right way. <laughs> Thanks, Des. I've got another one. Um, uh, we've still got another 10 minutes, so uh, I think we'll carry on going because there's quite a lot of questions. Um, is the hybrid mode able to measure MFM and PFM at the same spot? Can layered samples be measured like that, thinking of magnetic layers on top of a crystal or a layer that's piezoelectric? And that's coming from Martin Welk. Well, uh, that would be uh, actually a very interesting application uh, to, to check because, uh, yes, MFM uh, can be measured uh, with a hybrid mode. Uh, we have the data. Uh, we have the data about uh, measuring measuring the uh, piezo force response in hybrid mode. Uh, but uh, we didn't. Uh, we were not uh, lucky enough to find the sample which would show uh, both of them. And the good thing is that, uh, uh, the, well, like from uh, my point of view, it's, it will be possible to do with the single tip, like uh, with uh, the coded, for, for example, with the um, cobalt, or cobalt chrome, which is conductive at the same time. So I don't see any. Uh, uh, any technical limitation for this. The, uh, so if uh, uh, I sorry I forgot the name. Uh, so, so 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 if uh, if, if customer kindly <laughs> provides us with a such sample, that would be will be happy. Yeah, that's from Martin Welk. So uh, we'll we'll make a note of that and uh, and follow uh, up. Yes. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, um, I've got another question for you, Stas. Just hold on. Alana, I don't hear you. No, I haven't. No, because I was just muting myself while I found the question. Um, is it possible to perform Kelvin scanning probe on living cells, namely in liquid or in a buffer? And that's coming from Marco Farina. 
Uh, uh, frank, uh, frankly speaking, I, uh, um, I I didn't run such measurements uh, in, in my experience, but uh, I know that uh, there some of our customers ran experiments of Kelvin probe microscopy uh, in um, in oil solution. The, the difficulty with uh, with the, the buffer is that it's conductive, so. Um, I would not. Uh, I would say that uh, that's a difficult task to run electrical measurements uh, uh, in, a, especially on the living samples, <laughs> which which can be affected uh, in buffer. Maybe maybe I'm mistaken, but uh, what what uh, what is from my experience, my personal experience, is that uh, the Kelvin probe microscopy is possible in uh, non-conductive uh, liquids. Great, thanks, Daz. Um, I've got another question. Regarding uh, voltage and current lithography, would this method destroy or damage the tip? In our experience, force lithography damages the tip beyond use, and that's from Catherine Woodford. Uh, okay, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the tip, uh, which is used for the lithography, uh, should be really durable. <laughs> to survive uh, after this, and yes, uh, if if you have uh, if your coating is not uh, very good uh, in ca in case of voltage or current lithography, uh, it's uh, pretty easy to damage the tip end. Uh, but uh, so there are two, like uh, two ways out. So the first way is to use good tips. Uh, so as I said, uh, the diamond coated tips uh, show the very good performance in this case. Um, but if you wa want to use uh, tips with high high conductivity, so the uh, uh, the solution is to use uh, to find the regime uh, which is safe for the tips. And uh, this regime, from uh, from my experience, from my feeling, should be the done in a current mode, a current lithography mode, because in this case uh, uh, the the um, the electrical and chemical reaction and the uh, the uh, effect on the tip uh, uh, is uh, ca caused not by voltage which is applied, but by but by the current. So in case uh, it is possible to uh, to keep the current at such a certain level, which is known to be uh, safe for this uh, for this kind of tips. Uh, in, in, the, in this case, uh, tip can survive for a longer time. But uh, anyway, lithography uh, is not the uh, softest operation for AFM tips. That's true. Great, thanks very much, Daz. I've got um, I've got another question. We still have we still have some time. Um, there's a question here from. Uh, uh, a person called Subhajit Das saying, if you can do tip-enhanced Raman spectroscopy TERS using a Raman attachment with our microscope, please can you shed any light on that? Uh, so, uh, sh 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 shade any light? Um, can you can you clarify oh, if there is the possibility to do TERS using a Raman attachment with our microscopes? And I think that depends, but I'll let you answer that. Uh, well, well, uh, the uh, the room. I I, I didn't include uh, 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 slides about Raman, uh, uh, especially where in, to to this talk because uh, the, this is a, a very big topic uh, which deserves uh, several presentations. Uh, Actually, so does, we, uh, does. Excuse me. Just uh, for that uh, gentleman, I, I think um, there is actually an AFM Raman webinar loaded onto the NTMDT website um, that we held yes, exactly. in, in, in June. So if you'd like to go and look at that, um, then if you have any questions, uh, we can answer those uh, from once you've seen that particular presentation. Yeah, or well, you can uh, you can contact us and uh, for the particular. But uh, what I would say that uh, we uh, the Raman uh, and T enhanced uh, Raman are uh, uh, can be combined with hybrid mode and uh, we, we are soon we are launching, launching the uh, so-called uh, tip uh, visual visual probes coated with uh, gold 
uh, and uh, we we've got uh, gold alloy, and we we've got uh, really nice results, which will be presented uh, soon on the uh, one of our next webinars. Great, thanks, Stas. I think we've got time for maybe two more questions. Um, yep. I have one here um, for phase imaging of water on mica at air. Can you explain why NSG10 is specifically chosen and what typical scan speed is used? And that's from Florin Unger. Uh, well, uh, the, 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 as uh, the, what was shown, so it was shown on the slide uh, the, that scan was uh, captured with, with one, of, one of our customers from uh, Cuba. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, I don't know uh, why why was this particular type of the probe chosen, but uh, uh, the uh, in uh, for, for phase imaging, like uh, phase imaging is based on a, a non-contact mode or amplitude mod modulation mode. So the uh, first uh, like the range of probes which can be used uh, for this. Uh, is uh, so-called uh, tapping probes or uh, semi-contact probes um, because uh, the to, to, to make it possible to excite them mechanically. So NSG1 is one of the of those probes. And uh, what was the second part of the question? Ken, I'm going back back to it. There's quite a lot. Um, um, what typical scan speed is used? Oh, well, well I, I, if I'm not mistaken, in this case, uh, that was uh, uh, one hertz. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I, I should I should check this uh, uh, in our database. But uh, uh, the, the scan speed issue depends on uh, very many things. So uh, one of the things is the probe resonance frequency, uh, which uh, is one of the li li limitations. So the idea is that the probe should uh, uh, probe should make uh, some certain number of uh, uh, oscillation cycles, depending on its resonance frequency and, and the Q factor, to settle down in, in each point, in each, each scanning point. Uh, and uh, to if you, somebody wants to go really high. In speed, uh, we can use the high frequency uh, probes for which which have uh, more the for, for resonance frequency more than uh, one megahertz. Uh, so uh, the, the, this is one of the issue with uh, uh, with the choosing the probe frequency. That's great. Thank you very much, Daz. Um, I think there's uh, there were actually quite a lot of questions about the um, possibility of cleaning probes. Uh, between samples, um, particularly when people are using biological samples. Um, and I think maybe that's something that we could uh, address uh, in the, late, the webinar later on this year. I have um, one other question. Yes. Um, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big topic with, which was yeah. discussed uh, <laughs> like for, for five, five years ago. It was huge, huge conversation about this. Uh, Frank is speaking. The the uh, for final uh, uh, the conclusion was that uh, it's better to use the use the new one. Right. <laughs> there were there were many ways to have of cleaning probes, but uh, finally everybody uh, uh, su uh, su suggested to use the new one. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, um, we had a question uh, specifically actually about, uh, just one second, let me bring it back up. Uh, let me just get that. Does, um, does uh, NTMDT supply micro XRF attachments? Um, this is from a, a GLN Ready, um, and he's talking specifically actually about the Integra model. Uh, I'm uh, afraid I'm not... Uh, from uh, from the right division, <laughs> I'm, I'm more more for for the software and applications. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure about this. Um, for for GLN Ready, I will make a note of that for you and get the relevant uh, product manager to be in touch with you uh, regarding uh, Integra and the possibility of that. Um, I think that's all we have at the moment, uh, Staz, and we're just coming up to the last minute of the uh, of the webinar. So I'd like to thank everybody for attending. We had a great attendance today, and thank you very much, Staz, for um, an interesting presentation, um, a lot of information in quite a short space of time, um, and we hope to see you back here uh, for another NTMDT webinar very soon.
So uh, I want to thank you once again for attending this webinar from my side. And I want to mention that uh, all the uh, images, uh, uh, all the animations which were used in the, this presentation, uh, and maybe some, uh, some other more, uh, can be downloaded uh, and uh, used for free uh, from the link you see on your screens. So, and uh, uh, see you on upcoming webinars. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.